most stories that Native people tell, there's a reason why. It's a learning story. And we're not calling it a learning or a teaching story, but the results are that you've learned a lesson, um, whether it's about sharing, uh, whether it's about being proactive, uh, respecting another animal's dom domain, uh, not being a hunter who goes out and uh, kills every deer they see, you only kill what you need. Uh, not b water is sacred, uh, especially fresh water. Understanding that and, and thinking about that. And um, even uh, Grandmother Ocean, well, you can't keep defiling Mother Earth. And so it's, it's like about being respectful. And I think most teachers go, when they're telling stories, they intend to be respectful. But if they have stereotypes about Native people, then that's going to show. So they really have to think about what story they're telling and why they're telling it. And I think most people will get it. Um, people who are... Uh, indigenous to other countries knows the things that have happened in their original territory. Just think of it as we're not these exotic, exciting natives. Everybody loves to play Indian. You can't play Indian. You either are or you aren't. And it's not just your visual look. It's what's in here and it's up to in here. And I think that's important for people to know. So I, I think uh, most teachers are really anxious to learn that. Um, last year we didn't have our in-service teacher training, but we think we were, we were focusing right on um, our school teachers, and we should have broadened it to librarians and other cultural Absolutely. institutions yes. uh, to share the experience and, and give people some guidance of where to go mm -hmm. and even list of recommended books and why they're recommended mm -hmm. for different age groups. My first experience that I can remember with a storyteller who wasn't a family member and they did my family members didn't consider themselves mm -hmm. storytellers even if they were telling stories was a librarian at the Westerly Public Library and her name was Sally McCoy and on uh, I think it was one Saturday a month she told stories and I was enraptured by her storytelling she became every character mm -hmm. and um, you could tell she loved what she was doing. And as I've matured and become more comfortable with myself, I love it when I'm telling a story. And you can tell when you've pulled the audience in and it only gets better then. <laughs> you can tell the same story five different times, five different audiences, one each day. But the audience that pulls you in, they get a richer story. And that's what, uh, Something I learned from Sally McCoy. Mm. Okay, well, how about well, how the bear lost his, his tail? Now, we all know that the bear likes to eat. And humans can eat any food the bear can eat. And bears like honey, and there's certain bark, different things that they, they like to eat. And they get their fill. Well, there was this one bear. And this was back in the days when bears had long tails. And this one bear, he'd flop his tail back and forth, hunch his shoulders, and he just knew he had the finest tail of all. And he'd go up to the squirrels, you want to brush my tail? Mm -hmm. It's all combed out. I took a pine cone and it's just as smooth. And he'd, oh, bear, you're so foolish. Then he'd see the wolf and he'd say, Wolf, you want to brush my tail? It's prettier than yours. And he'd wave it. So look at it. The wind's just blowing through it. Oh, it's so nice. Well, he was so proud of his tail one year that instead of eating all the food he should have been eating, he was going around challenging one animal after another, from the deer to the elk to the fox, all of them about his beautiful tail. Well, winter came and the cold wind started to blow. All the leaves had fallen and the first snow started coming down. And the old bear went into his cave and he laid down and closed his eyes. Then he woke back up and said, oh, let me put my tail just so. 
and he flopped his tail up over it. Yes, my tail is the prettiest tail of all the animals in the forest. And he lay down and he went to sleep. And he's sleeping there, but he was having dreams. By this time, the snow had come down and covered all of the earth. The branches on the trees were heavy, laden with snow. The branches were hanging down, the weight was so heavy. Ice was forming. It was a crunch, crunch on the snow. And this day, the old bear woke up because he could hear something whistling, just walking along. He kind of lifted his head up and he looked out. What did he see? Just some footprints. And his stomach started growling and he said, oh, my stomach didn't eat enough. And he kind of turned around and he laid back down. He said, oh, let me flop that tail right there. And he flopped his tail there. And he went back to sleep. But his stomach kept growling and growling. A few days later, he woke up. He said, I hear that again. It's crunch, crunch, crunch on the snow. And something whistling. <whistles> he said, what is that? He lifted himself up and he looked out, pushed the brushes away from the front of his cave and he looked out and what did he see going up the path? But little fox. And that little fox had a stick and on that stick was some fish. And that fox was just walking along, whistling and singing. And he said, hey, 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 Mr. Fox, Mr. Fox. Mr. Fox looked back and he said, what, what do you want, bear? And he said, uh, 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 I'm hungry. I didn't get enough to eat. And hey, could you let me have a couple of those fish? He said, my stomach's growling. And he says, no, I have to take this fish home to my wife and kids. He said, see you later. And old bear's stomach was just growling and he was, saliva was coming out. And he was, oh God, what I wouldn't give for a fish. And he turned around, he laid back down, and he said, I know, I'll get him the next time. Well, a few days later, here comes Mr. Fox again, and old bear heard him, and he got up, and he stood there, and put his head outside the cave, and the wind was blowing, and the sky was gray and dark, but that old Mr. Fox was walking along. He said, hey, 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 Mr. Fox, I see you got six or seven fish there now. I said, Tell you what. You give me one of those fish, or two of those fish, I'll let you brush my tail. It's nice, you see my tail? You never saw a tail like that before. And he was just wagging that tail back and forth. And then that fox looked at him and he said, well, he said, I still gotta feed the wife and kids. He said, tell you what. He said, if you want some fish, go down on the pond, look around, you'll see where my hole was. Bear said, yeah, yeah. Well, how do I get the fish? He said, well, just sit there and drop your tail down in that hole. When you feel a tingle, you know you got a fish. He said, you can get as many fish as you want. So old Bear ice. said, okay. Well, Fox had gone down there and made a hole in the ice. He got his fish. So Bear went down there and he said, hmm. That's just a little hole, and I've got a big, beautiful tail. So he looked around, looked around, and he found a stick, and he started making that hole a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger. Then he sat down there. Oh, that water was cold, but he sat down there, and he dropped that tail down in that hole. Now, old Mr. Fox, he had gone around the forest, he had told the squirrels, he had told the chipmunks, he told the skunks, he told the rabbit, the wolf, the deer, the elk, all of them. Come out of your hiding. About noontime today, a watch bear, he's getting fish on the pond. So all the animals said, we're in our winter home. He said, no, no. Aren't you tired of hearing him talk about his beautiful tail? So they all groan, yeah, we are tired. Well, old Mr. Bear is sitting there. 
and that tail's down that cold water. But he didn't care because his stomach was growling. He wanted something to eat. It was rumbling. And he was kind of thin. He'd lost quite a bit of weight because he didn't eat. So then he said, hmm, oh, there's a tingle. I got a fish. Well, I still got to go back to sleep for another month or six weeks, so I'll get a couple more. Tingle, another fish. Tingle, tingle. So, ah, the sun is way up high in the heavens. He said, I'm going to sit here and get a whole tail full of fish. And he sat there and he started dozing off. About that time, in various parts of the woods all around the pond, there was deer looking. There was wolf looking. There was chipmunks up in the tree. They're looking. And they saw that bear laying out there, sitting back with his tail down in that hole. And the sun started moving further and further to the west. Oh, bear started waking up, chill. The wind was blowing and he got chilled. He said, oh, oh, oh. He said, I know I got enough fish now. He said, let me get up. And he tried to get up and he pulled. Hey, what happened here? And he pulled some more and he tried to get up. Oh, hey, hey, I'm stuck. I oh, took a deep breath. Took a ah. Got his shoulders puffed up there, and he pulled as hard as he could. And he trotted right up back to his cave, and he got in there, and he turned around to get his fish. There was nothing there. He turned around again, he turned around again. His tail was gone. All there was was a little short nub. And the old bear looked at it, and he thought about fox, and he thought about that hole in the ice, and he curled up in the back. Didn't sleep well, but that summer, and that spring, and that fall, he ate everything he should. And from that day to this day, he's never bragged about his tail, and he's never gone ice fishing again. I have spoken. Bye. <laughs>